is are still in Legendary series. My name is Osmo Cutie. I'm back with Greetorp. How's it going? It's going great, man. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm looking forward to casting this next matchup. It's the winner's match That's right. of Group B. So the winner of this next matchup between Raynad and Too Wet gets a direct seed into the semifinals tomorrow. That's right. That means they don't have to play an extra series of a best of five. Just reduces the variance and allows them to win that spot uh, for the qualify or excuse me, qualify for the season finals. Yeah. And uh, both these players had uh, quite different runs through their first matchups in this oh, yes. group. Too Wet was a little bit uh, more hard fought. Well, Rain had 3 0'd Domdis in his first matchup uh, for Group B here. So uh, this is going to be a really interesting uh, match here. Rain had, of course, hasn't met much tournament success as of late. Um, he's made it in the, I actually have all of his tournament successes recently written down here. Uh, he was uh, <laughs> top four at the DreamHack Buy Game Championship, top eight at Sitsura Cup number two. Top eight at the uh, the IET, which was a Chinese tournament that happened uh, just a couple weeks ago, or just a week ago. Uh, he won the Lord of the Arena one. Not <laughs> not sure how relevant that is. Uh, and he he also won the Battle of the Best. Okay. So that that's not a very long resume TJ. for a player that's been a pro Hearthstone player as long as Raynad. Real talk right now. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna tell tell you. I really like Raynad because he taught me a lot about Hearthstone. You know, I, yeah. I, I went into it. It's the first card game that I ever played outside of poker, of course. But it's the first card game that I ever played. He's the one. I was like, okay, let me check out his YouTube. I thought his stuff, his content was really good. Is right now his results a representation of how good this guy is? No. Or is this complete RNG it's just a sample size, and no. we, shouldn't, we shouldn't worry about it. A lot much. of players will say Raynad is playing really well right now. Um, he, and Frodan talked about it earlier. People are criticizing his deck choices more than his play. They're saying he's playing really well. He just doesn't have the best read on the meta. Oh, I forgot to list one more accomplishment here. He took top two in the Cooler Master Show Match versus Savitz. <laughs> it was a show match <laughs> versus Savitz, and he took top second. Two, bro. <laughs> top wow. two. Top two. Out of two. That's pretty bold. Yeah. I forgot forgot to list that all important Thanks, bro. accomplishment there. I guess the accomplishment was getting invited to that show. That's match. the trophy you get for, for participating, right? Exactly. That's the participation award yeah. that you just announced was one of his accomplishments. Yeah. You basically said one of his best accomplishments was participating in a, in a show match. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, the other accomplishments are, aren't as tangible, I suppose. Uh, owning a successful Hearthstone brand uh -huh. in Temple Storm is actually a really big deal. Absolutely. And uh, he's, he's a cool guy. I've actually uh, casted with him before um, at the, legendary, the last Legendary Series LAN Finals. I'm getting really scared of all the things that you're saying right now. Because, you know, in StarCraft, we have this thing where it, when people are good but not good enough, we said, he's a really nice guy. <laughs> he's, he's, he's good. And he's a really nice guy. I mean, if you ever meet this guy in person, yeah. he's great. He's a really nice guy. <laughs> and he's casting. <laughs> he's a really nice guy. I can't wait until he moves over into casting. Yep. <laughs> That's what, That's what it comes you're telling to. me, TJ. So yeah. the real talk, the narrative that you're telling me is indirect, but he's a great player. Yeah, pretty much. The right. roundabout way. Well, things are happening. It's the hard-hitting questions that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting to you right now. That's right. Two wild growths popping out here. Man, game accelerates so fast with this. Yeah, and uh, we actually see three out of the four wild growths yep. at the very start of the game here. So uh, now the Druid versus Druid Mirror is a little bit interesting. It's basically the first player to control the board. The player that ramps up the quickly mm -hmm. wins. They don't have a lot of comeback mechanics. Sylvanas is one of those comeback mechanics, okay. but it's susceptible to, see, uh, to keep her. Of course. Um, now Raynad... It actually has a little bit different of a deck, and we didn't get to see the whole thing because he won on, like, turn 11 with <laughs> Force of Nature double Savage Roar in his last game. But he just run Ancient of Wars, which is a little bit of an interesting choice, and it's sort of a, a meta call right now saying, well, there's a lot of uh, Patron Warriors on the, on the, the and everybody's lineups right now, and Ancient of War does fantastic. It, it improves the Druid match because that so class quite a bit. You would say it improves the Druid versus Druid class uh, matchup as well? No, I just I, I just think it's interesting. Okay. It can be a roundabout way for you to come back in a game. What's the opportunity cost of the Ancient of War? So what are we giving up for the Ancient of War to be there? 
Um, I think one of the five drops. Like, I think you're sacrificing, you're taking out a crucial five drop in your deck, whether it be, um, it's obviously not Lothep, because like he has Lothep. Druid of the Claw? Like, one of the Druid of the Claws, or okay. one Azure Drake, or one Sludge Belcher. Okay. Uh, there's also a chance that he's taking out one of the high end, um, which a lot of times Druids will run, like, three cards in the high end, like Dr. Boom, insert a threat here, and then Scenarius. I see. So, like, Dr. Boom, Rag, Scenarius, or just Dr. Boom, Rag, and then throw in something extra in the sixth slot. Mm. Um, so they might he might be cutting down on that. Uh, we didn't see a second Force of Nature. We saw double Savage Roar, but we didn't see double Force of Nature. So cutting one Force of Nature is also an option okay. as well. That makes sense. So there's there's quite a few things that you can cut that you can cut pretty successfully and still be able to fit in Ancient of War. All right, let's... Um, we're not sure what's going to happen here because there's really, really tough decisions overall. Like, do you... Like, silencing this Thorazine feels so wrong yeah, at this point. I think Just, you need to silence the Sludge Belcher and trade into the Thorazine and yeah. try and steal something. That would be beautiful. But then he's literally not doing anything else. So he might just want to stall for time mm -hmm. by playing the Sludge Belcher and trying to get maybe a little more, bit more value out of Sylvanas. Okay. But this means Thorazine's most likely going to survive another turn, which means whatever those four cards are in Tuet's hand... <laughs> are going to be pretty cheap. And one of those is a Savage Roar. So being able to play a Savage Roar for one mana opens up, even without Innervate, the possible for a double That's right. combo. That's right. Makes it very, very nice for the later stages. Although, this particular turn gets kind of... Okay, he's going to go for the Wrath. Yep. Okay. Wrath and then play some, play some Shades here. Seems like a pretty good option to me. Both of them? I'm tempted to play both because what's the downside to playing both? Against some classes, like against like a Hellfire, like Warlock, you're sure, worried about Hellfire. Bad, but, but the only thing you're worried about against um, Druid is Azure Drake Swipe, which is a possibility as long as he's keeping track of the coin usage. Mm -hmm. um, but he decides and goes ahead and just plays one Hero Powers. Uh, he wanted to cycle with that Wrath, which, was, which didn't give him much mana left over. But yeah. That's a one mana sap draw. Interesting. Interesting. He could take the shade. Uh, yeah, you could take the shade if you really wanted to. Sh yeah. Uh, he p pushes that force of nature, trades with all of them, and then Sylvanas into the, the taunter. Yeah, I think he wants to play his own. Um, he's got two pieces of the combo in his hand right now. Mm -hmm. So Emperor Thor's hand is almost an automatic play. So I think he can hero power into the slime, steal either the shade or, or the, the sunfear taunter. protector, and then throw down his yeah. his emperor. Because look at look at what that's reducing. That's reducing Lothed, oh, Force yeah. of Nature, Savator, and Keeper of the Grove. Like that sets you up for a turn where you can play Keeper of the Grove, Force of Nature, and Savator in the same turn. It's devastating. Yeah. But he is gonna He's uh, gonna keep her here. Yeah. Kill the Thorazine. And then just trade out for the shade. So this guarantees him the shade, but he is floating quite a bit of mana and delaying his emperor. Okay. Which isn't the I worst mean, thing in yeah, the world. Yeah, it's not the worst and very fortuitous for him. I mean, if you look at what got uh, reduced over here, I mean, they, as you said, the one drop Savage Roar is very important, but the wild growth doesn't really matter nearly as much. Well, Probably you a, not. You get a free cycle on turn 10. That's true. That's true. Which could end up being a big deal. And being able to play something alongside the Dr. Boom on turn 8, it's not a luxury that you usually can afford. Yep. Um, how much damage is this? He can force a nature Savage Roar for 14 plus... 5 plus eight. 4, 9. Or, sorry, 9. Yeah. So 20, 23. It's not enough. Not it's enough. a lot, but it's not enough. What is his turn here? I I'm very unclear of this, too. Yeah, I mean, he wa it feels like he wants to Emperor here. But if he doesn't deal with what's on the board, he dies to Force to of Nature Savage. Force of Nature Savage, yeah. And in fact, I think that if he doesn't clear anything off the board, he, he just dies, dies to, to Savage, just Savage Roar. Yeah. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And yeah, 12 plus uh, it would be plus 10. So 10. yeah, he would be dead. Yep. Um, and if he just clears off these boom bots, there's a chance that um, he can do enough damage to face where it would kill him anyway. Yep. So, in fact, if he just taunts up here and then goes face, 
I think he's dead with the swipe in the Savage Roar. He has to kill the boom. Should he kill the boom bots now? And keep the Druid of. Uh, I guess it. To be honest, I think he has to. Uh, and I think that is it. game. Oh, no, Lothar. Oh, okay, Sorry, okay, Lothar. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Whoops. That is. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. That was a terrible impression. Yeah. Sorry. We both. Can't I was actually doing an impression of you. <laughs> doing an impression of me doing a bad impression. <laughs> That's not um, a good impression. Let's see. So he has, again, still a lot. 12 plus 10. So he has 22 damage, but he has to get through a 6 drop, or a 6 health creature. Mm -hmm. uh, man. Kind of a weird spot. I think, he need, I think he has to savage right here, to be honest. Why do you say that? Just because he has to clear enough off the board to where he doesn't die. To the saboteur as well, right? Yeah, because he he He's can only play one too. thing here, so he can play Druid of the Claw, and then Hero Power. But how does he effectively deal with what's on the board if he just does that? That's it's true. way too risky. I think saboteur he needs to sort of be proactive here, and uh, since he doesn't have combo, um, he can be pretty liberal with uh, giving this up. Okay. In this way, he can pretty much clear he can clear up everything. Oh, Ooh, that is really rough. So does use his face for it. And just hero power? It? No, because either way he's going to use his face to kill something else, and or oh, like he's going to use his face to kill the shade, so he'll take less oh, yeah, damage yeah, this yeah. way. Right. Uh, but those bombs were terrible because he's going to trade into those things anyway. Wow, brutal, man. Yeah. So brutal. Yeah. So basically, the bomb hits did nothing. Yeah. Because he killed whatever the bombs hit anyway, with enough damage, without the bombs. Yep. But he has control over the board, and. Raynad doesn't really have a way to immediately deal with what's what's out there, except for the shade. All right, Ancient of War it will pop out here. Uh, it's actually uh, not the worst situation for Raynad. Ooh, Zombie Chow is not what you want to see no, at this stage. not at all. But as you said, he's going to get that free cycle at turn 10. Let's see what he gets. Big money, big money. No whammy. That's actually a really good draw. That is not bad at all. Because he can cycle more. And the strongest play you can make on turn 10 is double five drop. Excess mana just wants to chill there. We'll just... I actually said, let's just keep it there. Yeah. You told him. Hey, production, <laughs> can you just uh, keep that excess mana That's just fine. Yeah. floating right off to the left side yeah. of his face? Thank you. No, that is... It uh, looks like a spectator issue. Now the Azure Drake's covering it. Oh, the Azure Drake's going to stay there now. <laughs> okay. Okay, there All we right. go. I was going to say, we're going to party right, right there. What's his draw? Force of Nature. Obviously not as strong here. He has to go for the swipe and... Uh, uh, He's going to use his face to wow. clear off the rest. Okay. Yeah. I like this because it sets him up for lethal next turn if he draws in yeah. the second Savage Roar. That makes sense. And he's willing to take the five damage just because he's not really in any danger of dying. Of course, a <laughs> Force Nature Double Savage Roar, which Raynet has a knack <laughs> for drawing into, would do it, but... Man, this Thorazine just like, it's so close to always popping out here. It just is never convenient to... Mm -hmm. And I think that's the like big problem with Thorazin. Like it's either you get it out early or you can't push it out at all yeah. for a long time. And also, even when you do push it out, it really isn't doing that much, especially because no. you're already like playing most of your cards in yeah. the earlier stages. Now this is still okay if he puts out Emperor Thorazin here, mm -hmm. just because he's reducing Force of Nature and Savage Roar. Okay. Um, there's. N there's no way he can play around combo right now. Because if he throws yeah. out Druid of the Claw in taunt form, he's still the dead. Azure Drake trades into it. He's still below 14 health. Yeah. Uh, or he's still at 14 health with the Hero Power. He's still dead. So you might as well throw out uh, the Thor's uh, situation. Savage War for the win. Nope. That's a Harrison Jones. So wait, he does have 6 plus 4. No, he has lethal. Oh, no, no. He doesn't have enough mana. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm thinking the Thor's and just uh, reduced that. Yeah. Okay. That was Raynad's Force of Nature. That's right. You could tell because his cards are golden. Oh, all of them. <laughs> all of them. Yeah. So glorious. It's 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 pretty funny to look at like the difference between these guys' decks. The two players in the tournament that have like all golden decks, Amaz and Raynad. They own their they own, own, they own brands. Everything, bro. Yeah. To which it's like I'm just scraping by with <laughs> with Grays. I'm still trying to craft my rag. Who was our free-to-play player today? Uh, Cross. Cross, that's right. Uh, he was 
Uh, there could be more free-to-play players, but he was the only one that actually told me, he said, I'm very passionate about showing what free-to-play players can do. Uh, uh. Um, so, and he said he's, he, he specifically told me he's playing for the guys that are free-to-play. Oh, wow. Because a lot of players that he practices with and plays with um, are J from Japan, and um, oh, a lot cool. of those players are uh, free-to-play just because they don't want to. They don't want to. They play on two different servers a lot of times. They mm -hmm. play on the Asian servers and on North American servers. So a lot of times they don't want to spend money on both. Makes sense. For it all. All right. Unfortunate draw right here. Uh, I feel like Raynad does have lethal next turn. It looks like. I don't think there's any way for him to. I mean, 14 with the Force of Nature and Savage Roar combo, and then of course buffing yeah. up the other two. He can use Force of Nature here to clear off the he through the claw, and then hopefully clear off. Um. The, 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 sh the whole shredder? Yeah. yeah. It's his only way to survive. Okay. Now, the the one way that he does win here is if whatever comes out from the the powdered shredder has more than three health. Yes. Um, but, yeah, more than, it has out. to have more than three health. Because he, if he can kill it here, he can block it. But it's going to take two damage, so it'll be at two health. So as long as it... Actually, two. no, no, it won't matter because he's at 15 health. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, no, he'll be at, he, they're reduced, so he's at. Oh, uh, wait. Oh, no, that'll still block it. Okay. He's good. It's so close, that's why. It's very close. Okay. Oh. Interesting. Does I he mean, one force of nature now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he heals with the zombie shell, he heals yeah, back oh up out of range. Oh, my God, that's brutal. Yeah. So he can just use a force nature here and your power face, and he'll put him at what? 12? 12? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 11. 11 because of the well, hero power. At 12 after two its hero power the yeah. following turn. So he's in a pretty good spot. Very much so. Mm. Uh, I mean, if uh, if we don't see uh, two wet draw into a taunt, it, the game's over. Yeah. And he's been through a lot of his taunts already, or most of them. I'm not sure if he runs like second sludge belcher or. Uh, we don't. We know he doesn't run Ancient of Wars himself. Mm -hmm. Two hundred second. What could he possibly <laughs> have in his hands? I'm so frightened. Man, I love how Raynad always like. He kind of wears his emotions on his sleeve so much, yeah, yeah. so you can really see like exactly how he feels when he's mm -hmm. going throughout this. Yeah. I mean, what is he thinking about? Is he actually thinking about attacking something with face? Yeah, you can gaze into the wrinkles in his forehead and read his mind. <laughs> That's right, man. It's a soul read. You could feel it. Yep. Oh, yeah. There he goes. I think it was just he feels comfortable, how, yeah. obviously. The best way to trade it, the best way to put on as much damage as possible. Yep. Um, and, you know, this does kind of look like it's desperate, too. Like, oh, I need to I need to push at you as fast yeah. as possible. Obviously, this Innervate does not help at all. He could throw down Sylvanas and Harrison Jones, but we know it is futile. Yeah. And he's actually going to take his time to think over what he should do. <laughs> but he's dead. He's dead. Raindad knows it. He took his his fatal tip of sip, tip of C. Now, watch sip of D. What, whenever he knows he's won, he stops looking at the screen and mm -hmm. just looks over to the sides. Yep, get some more tea. And then he looks over, does the smirk. It feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're reading too much into Raindad no. right now. Okay, yeah. so when I was in the back watching this, I was like, man, uh, we were talking, I was talking with the production guys, and I was like, all he's doing right now is being like, can you please play? Yeah. And some, sometimes Please people, let me win. Sometimes people are like that for right now as well, but we'll see. If, okay. Force of Nature, Savage Roar. That's going to be game number one going over to Raynad. And uh, he's on a four-game winning streak right now. Uh, he has not lost a game in this week's Legendary Series so far. It's a pretty impressive run. It is. Sample size, though. Don't want to, like... <laughs> it's only four. I mean, w once you see that he won with a Force of Nature, Savage Roar, Innervate, Savage Roar, Innervate, base, yeah. uh, Hero Power. I mean, you have to say... He didn't have too much business winning the game, at least that quickly. No. I mean, yeah. doing more than 30 damage in a single turn. That's kind of nice to do, mm -hmm. very clearly. Uh, but when it comes down to it, yes, he has played very accurately. And yeah. he's showcasing some talent here. Mm-hmm. So Raynad still has Warlock and Warrior left. That is the Grim Patient Warrior and the Handlock left. And, of course, Tewit's got to find a win with all three of his decks that are left. He's got Druid, Hunter, and Mage. 
Still has to find one with that Druid at some point. Um, I mean, I, I can imagine he'll just throw Druid out there again. Uh, because Druid is probably his is going to be his best chance at beating Handlock for sure. And uh, most likely going to be his... Actually, no, he has Hunter. So he actually has a lot of different ways that he can play this. Three most popular classes right now are like Druid, Hunter, and uh, Warrior. Warrior, right? Yeah. And then the Warlock has made a comeback, I would say, uh, yeah. recently. But mm -hmm. it's still like uh, tier... I think those four are probably all about even. Yeah. Um, I would even, at least in recent tournaments, I would say Druid has sort of de uh, declined slightly in popularity. But Druid will always be one of the top decks just because of its ability to ramp and have really explosive starts with cards like Wild Growth and Innervate, which will always be core to what a Druid's trying to do. Gotcha. Um, Warrior has multiple variations of decks, and the what pro players pretty much unanimously, unanimously consider to be the strongest deck in the competitive scene right now, which is Patron Warrior. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the main counters to Patron Warrior is Warrior, is Control Warrior. So when you have the strongest deck and one of the deck that counters the strongest deck the best, that class is going to be popular. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so interesting, too, man. Like, uh, bringing... Okay, so countering Patron Warrior is good with regular Warrior, but I feel like, um, you know, Control Warrior these days, just like, it's... Careful. Control Warrior is my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Careful where you're treading here. It's a little bit uh, predictable. Okay. Like as soon as you yep. you see the first armor smith, you're like, oh, I know exactly what I'm playing against. I was uh, well, no, because Grim Patron Warrior also runs armor smiths. They do. Most not of them. The old Grim Patron Warriors did not. Okay. Uh, the very first iterations of Patron Warriors, but now it's pretty much staple, just because. Oh, interesting. It it does well against so many things, and it buys you time in the early game, which is that what makes you need. sense. That makes because their early game, like they're starting yeah. to ramp out. They need a lot of mana. Yeah. For, it's for it's crucial against hunters. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's pretty crucial against most matchups. Just okay. because, especially later in the game, you can make ridiculous amounts of armor, which buys you time. Against classes like Hunter and Freeze Mage, it can put you out of range of uh, all their bursts, uh, additional ways to gain armor. So, gotcha. Uh, control Warrior is predictable once you know it's Control Warrior, but you have to sort of wait until you see cards like Shield Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes a while before you understand sure. whether or not it's a control warrior or a patron warrior. Um, there's a couple cards that are dead giveaway. If you see Inner Rage early on, if you see Slam early on, um, then it's Grim Patron. Mm -hmm. If you see No Mush Inventor, if you see Dread yep. Corsair, yep. that gives away that it's Grim Patron. But to give it away that it's control warrior takes a while. Usually Shield Maiden is the first card that comes down that's, ex that's exclusive to control warrior. Interesting. Um, but, I wonder how much like early game pressure you need to put down in order to like show um, force warrior to actually push out with those uh, grim patron cards because like a lot of times against warrior you have to distinguish it's the same way like yeah. you're distinguishing gosh what's something similar that's like not so polarized because I, I want to say mech mage against freeze mage but it's very obvious yeah. in the even, first three turns even mid range hunter versus face hunter is really obvious. Yeah, because mid-range hunters don't usually have a turn one play, and if they do, it's web smear. Mm -hmm. um, whereas face hunter always has a turn one play, whether it be work and infiltrator, yeah. leopard gnome. Sometimes they'll just throw out an abusive sergeant just to have something on the board to maybe buff with glaive zuka. Um, so it's probably the the hardest deck to distinguish that quickly. Man, uh, so interesting. Yeah, even whirlwind can sometimes be put into control warrior. Not mu uh, so much as of late, but it was a card that a lot of players experimented with in control warrior. Um, oh. Also, though, for but for this format, I, I know we're tangenting a ton, but I know for this format, it's GSL format, you can't change your decks for two days straight. Yeah, it's all decks, the same decks throughout the whole tournament. Yeah, so I feel like Patron Warrior is better all around right now based on yeah. the, the current meta rather than going for Control Warrior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Control Warrior has a lot of weak... I think Control Warrior has a weak matchup against Midrange Hunter. Some people will disagree with me. But I think Midrange Hunter and Druid, which are so popular right now, just destroy Control Warrior. I see. Um, maybe not destroy, but have a favorable matchup. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And so you can't bring Control Warrior just to do well against Grim Patron Warrior. It's just not going to work. Understandable. And <laughs> you might as well just bring Grim Patron Warrior. <laughs> like, you can only bring one Warrior dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why a lot of people say, well, why don't more people play Control Warrior? Because they're all playing Grim Patron Warrior. Yeah. Why would you play a, a deck that counters Grim Patron Warrior when you can just play Grim Patron Warrior yourself? Yeah. Just have a favorable matchup, or mm -hmm. at least an even matchup. Well, at least an even matchup if you get the mirror. 
Yeah. Or most likely a favorable matchup if you don't get the mirror. Yeah. So. Positive EV lines for both of them. Um, anyway. Whatever that means. <laughs> Is that a statistic thing? Uh, EV? My... My no, expected value. Oh, yeah, okay. it, is, it is. It is. Okay. Thank you. I'm learning so much. Bro, we're going to talk tonight. <laughs> I'm we're pretending tonight. like I'm learning so much. I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. statistics, numbers. Oh, mm -hmm. really? Go yeah. on. Uh, we'll talk about it tonight, bro. Okay. You know. S sounds like a plan. Uh, here we do have... Um, it's weird that Interesting. He, yeah. Yeah. I was just gonna say it's interesting that he's actually opting to go for animal companion here, but I think he wants to coin out. No, does he, he wants want to coin out an owl possibly? Wow. Okay. Oh, the free freezing the trap. Uh -huh. Okay. I, I mean, it's understandable because he wants to maintain his weapon. Yeah. And get an extra three damage because I think he feels. Uh, that but feel good. to be honest, I just don't really know what the freezing trap does. Um, yeah. It's not accomplishing any timing, right? Yeah, because right now, uh, the only thing the only thing that I'm I'm thinking is he wants to get an extra charge on Eaglehorn Bow, but there's no reason to attack with this Acclair right now. Because eventually it's going to get another draw, whether yeah, yeah, it be yeah. from the Despite Whirlwind. That one damage is completely inconsequential. You might as well silence it. It effectively does the same thing. It takes out the effectiveness of that uh, Acolyte of Pain. Oh my gosh. He ends up attacking into it anyway. What? Uh, I mean, he's trying to get rid of a draw, but still, yeah. like. It's, I, at the end of the day, it's the same exact thing, but I think in that scenario, the owl comes out on top uh, more times than not. There are a lot of crucial targets to silence in Grim Patron Warrior, like Grim Patrons, mm -hmm. or maybe a fresh Acolyte, or a big thing could be Armorsmith. Uh, in the late game, okay. you can okay. make turns where you gain a lot of health with Armorsmith. Gonna Ooh. throw out Grim Patron, makes sense. This is a slightly risky because if this Pile of Shredder pulls out something with three attack, all of a sudden you're left with one Grim Patron. That's not very healthy. Two attack, it's not the <laughs> it's not the best, not the worst type of deal. He can clear he off one shot. and possibly and quick shot the other. Um, even silence it. But you don't want to be using like <laughs> it's so tough, man. Like you have to be going face at this point when your opponents, like, th their cards are so plentiful and yours aren't. Plentiful. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Long day. Right, um, buddy. I mean, Meteor Range Hunter has a little bit more leeway because their cards have more value than, yeah. than like, Face Hunter. So they, uh, he doesn't necessarily Ooh. have to, but playing a Houndmaster on nothing just to have a presence on the board is... Not the best thing. And you just boom here, right? Yeah, uh, don't, don't see any reason not to boom. Your opponent has two cards in his hand. He played Houndmaster on a board with nothing on it. It's so desperation. It's basically saying his hand is situational. Yes. Um, he's saying what could possibly be in his hand. Usually if a, if a hunter plays like that and either passes a turn with mana floating or plays a, an inefficient play like Houndmaster on nothing, a lot of times they're sitting on situational things like Owl, Unleash the Hounds, Traps. So, oh, wow. Look at this. Armorsmith. I mean, yeah. there is the possibility of, of just playing smaller minions. You can slam Cruel Task. You can fire War Axe, this baby. You can get Armorsmith on. Um, yeah, I don't okay. I don't really see any reason yeah. not to play Dr. Boom. Because either way, you're playing one or two creatures. I could say, well, maybe he doesn't want to play around Unleash the Hounds. Yep. Whoa, right on time. I think he has to boom it up. Two Wet's face is like, is that good? <laughs> I think it's good. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yep. It's good. It's yeah. exact exact thought process here. And just faces. All right. But I mean, he's out of cards. That's a pretty big deal. Um. So he's got slam execute for this uh, uh, Doctor Boom, and well, I, I mean, he could trigger the execute with uh, the Boom Box. This is. Pretty inconsequential here. Uh, you can use the Cruel Taskmaster sort of emergency. Okay. Use one of the boom bots to clear into the uh, the Houndmaster. Really, it doesn't matter where he throws that slam. And in fact, this gives him more opportunities to clear everything off the board yeah. than just pl just playing Slam Execute under the Doctor makes sense. would have. Definitely makes sense. He's going to armor Smith. I think he's just like calculating everything, making sure it's precise. <laughs> Raynette's face is sort of like, you I see what don't I'm... really know what's happening <laughs> right now. 
But I'm he's just like playing so cards. deliberate with everything, man. Yeah. You could see his face. He's like concentra hardcore concentrating. Oh, everything. actually, I forgot to factor in the freezing trap. So uh, oh, he has wow. cool Taskmaster. Just kidding. For, just yeah. so many ways to do the same, the same thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. Curl task, execute, face. Yeah. Life is good for Raynan. Uh, he effectively just threw away his armor smith, but it really couldn't have accounted for that fact. Yeah. Uh, he's putting a lot of pressure on. Uh, he's got double battle rage for some uh, for some cycle here. Uh, he does have to have some damage minions though, but he has death bite. Uh, he's got pretty much the all world the cards on the that string, he needs. Man. Yep. He's sitting on the rainbow. Just needs like Warsong Commander, Grim Patron, Frothing Berserker. Any a combination of any two of those, pretty <laughs> much. I'm pretty sure you just win with these two cards. <laughs> yeah, if they attack face <laughs> twice, yeah. like this turn and then next turn, he doesn't need anything else. He's Sludge Belcher uh, and just go. He yeah. doesn't even have to put the Death Spite on. Yeah. <laughs> I would actually just do Fiery War Axe, uh, armor up, and then just go from there. Why not? I mean, he could Dr. Boom. He could just attack him with these two creatures, not even armor up, <laughs> and then just pass. <laughs> And, and still be in a good position. Okay. Belcher. Fiery? No, oh, Battle Rages. Okay. Okay. More, the, more Battle Rage. Also takes a Beast off the board, so it gets yeah, rid of Kill that, Command uh, if that's a card that's true. in your hand. Very true. Um, and then Fire War Axe goes face. So that, that play wasn't just to say, hey, I want more Battle Rage cards. Makes uh, sense. I it's, like it. To what's in a rough spot here. Yeah. I mean, I think the play is pretty clear. He has to Owl. Yeah. Owl, Unleash, then Freezing Trap, maybe throw in a Hero Power, then Concede. <laughs> no, bro. He has the RNG of the Boom. Yeah, boom. no, no. This, I mean, he the does dream. actually have uh, he's, he's got the dream. a way to pretty effectively clear it. Uh, this Dr. Boom is going to be pretty lo pretty big, though. He needs to do four damage on Boom. Oh, this Boom bot. He might even just ignore it. He can't ignore it. He can't ignore it. No. He, he dies. Well, he doesn't die. He has Freezing Trap. Right. Yeah, I th I think you go for the guaranteed play and kill the Sludge Belcher here. We'll find sludge out. Sludge Belcher is easier to we'll play. We'll find out. Oh, uh, he has to kill the Boom now. Well, to be honest, I would still kill the Sludge Belcher. Yeah, because the Boom. Boom Boom getting f uh, frozen is, I mean, it's nine mana. Yeah. You're, the Belcher is harder to get through. Yeah, exactly. Yep, 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 yep. Still don't matter none. Life is pretty difficult. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so deep, so profound. <laughs> you know. What is the meaning of life? Life is difficult, bro. Why does my Dr. Boom cost nine? Fear not. It will cost eight, too. Why am I never lucky? For I am Raynad. <sighs> What is the meaning of life? <laughs> Why? Oh, yeah. The dream. That's <laughs> je, je, If I have to say so. Yeah. So it looks like Raynad's actually going to take a 2 0 lead in. I mean, the sample size is getting larger. It's getting larger. Small sample size at first. 3 0. Great. 4 0. Good job, Raynad. 5 0. Raynad's on a roll. Are you watching Raynad's eyes, by the way? He looks away, nope. gives like smirk. You're going to write a book on the... Feels good about it. The tendencies of Raynad in his natural Hearthstone. I habitat. think it's really important, man. Like, things like that. Let's say you're ever in a land, and you mm -hmm. can actually see your opponent's face. Like, if I can see Raynad's face as he's playing, that's a huge indicator of how I can actually adjust my plays. I Fair mean, enough. It, it's more... Again, it's more information that you're being given over your opponents in that same reciprocal yeah. position. Yeah. All right. Well, Raynad is actually one game away from securing his spot um, in the semifinals, and I believe he would actually. Amaz was the player from Group A who who was directly. Was it Amaz or was it Luigi's? It was Amaz. Okay, that'd be a, a pretty big statement for those two players right. to to both get directly seated in. If you guys, if you are the invited player, you are considered the favorite in your group. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, if you in weeks one and two, one of the invited players made it through. And, I mean, people will say, oh, well, uh, I'm tired of the invite tournaments. The same players that get invited all the time. Well, I mean, they have to fight a lot. These guys have to win uh, at least three best or four best of fives 
against players that have proven themselves yeah. to be able to make it through 500 to 700 player brackets. And um, these guys beat a lot of great players too. Uh, too Wet, in his run, uh, he beat players like Zixo. Um, he beat the guy that beat RDU. Like, mm -hmm. th these guys beat a lot of pro players just to get to where they are. And and so if, a, if, a pro, if an invited player can come in and actually win in such a dominating fashion, like the performance that Reyna and Amos have been putting on today, that's a pretty big statement. I mean, they're time-tested when it comes yeah. down to it. They have been putting up... I mean, Reynad, uh, we talked about his tournament results lately. Obviously, yeah. it's not as strong as people want it to yeah. be. But at the same time, Reynad has, as I said, been time-tested. He's proven that he <laughs> has the knowledge. I think, in general, people might not like love his character. Yeah. But they do, do respect his play. Yeah, that's right? true. Like that's it's, it's funny, I actually wrote down the accomplishments of Amaz and Reynad right next to each other. And the length of the writing, you can you can see it here. The length of the writing is actually the same. Yeah. But Reynad's is filled with a lot of fluff. <laughs> like the top two out of two. <laughs> two out of two in, in show match. With Savits. I'll, I'll, I'll tell Amaz is tomorrow, but his list of accomplishments is just huge. But again, back to the game. Reynad, he's got three chances to find a win with Warlock, with Handlock. Now, that may seem like, oh yeah, Reynad's got this one in the bag. It's actually going to be tough because Two Wet's lineup actually does really well against Handlock. He has uh, Fast Druid, Mid Range Hunter, and the Mage, the Tempo Mage, which all three have at least even matchups with Handlock in my opinion. Sure. If we give it, let's say, 40% win rate, though, for um, for the Warlock. Okay. Across all three matchups. Across 40%. all three matchups. We're still looking like, uh, let's see. I would never be able to know this one. So this is all on you, stats man. He's drawing blanks. He's put on the spot. He can't do it. The pressure is real. <laughs> Uh, I'm coming up with a number, but it just doesn't feel right. There's a Twitch chat hero who already did this 10 seconds ago. <laughs> How does that feel? It feels terrible, man. <laughs> and there's the one the one guy still. That one guy out there just nodded to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Asma <laughs> Kid is right. Oh, wait. Um, He's right. All right. I don't even know what nope, to do. Nope, it's lost. It it's okay, man. I failed. It's been a long day. <laughs> I will has, say that. It has. Yeah, yeah. Um... You go on with commentary. I'll just keep thinking okay. about it. Okay, it hasn't been that long of a day for Reynad, who has gone 5-0 in the five games that he's played. and uh, Right now, he's actually in a little bit of tough position. The hand that he does have is pretty fantastic. He's got Molten Giant anti heal bot, and he also has a lot of ways to deal with these small, annoying creatures um, that hunters are going to put out. Being able to have mortal coils to cycle through, silence for the mad scientists. If you're the hunter, and you're, or if you're the warlock, and you're coming to turn four, and you haven't taken much damage, and there's only a Haunted Creeper on the board, mm -hmm. you're like, whoa. Thank you. <laughs> because that's a, a fantastic position to be sure. in. Sure. He can play a Twilight Drake safely right I now. I know. It's just such a beautiful spot. Uh, ordinarily, like, if you're being bursted down to, like, 18, 20 at this point, you're feeling really, really scared. Yeah. Um, and you don't... I mean, you have to pu push out the Twilight Drake at that point, but a lot of times it's like... God, do I Hellfire here, or do I put out the Twilight Drake, go down to, like, 8? Um, and obviously, that's the thing with the mid-range hunters. They just can't put out the damage that, yeah. you know, face hunters can really put down. Yeah. By the way, I got the math. Okay, It's around Let's 78 to 79% that he wins one, one of the three, assuming a 40% win rate. That's actually a pretty good chance. That's a very good chance. So you look at it, and even though he's got three-week matchups coming up, it's still the fact that he has three chances yeah. to do it to and take one win. It's a six to four advantage. That's yeah, a yeah. pretty short, or three to two rather. Yeah, uh, it, that's pretty powerful right there. Yeah, and uh, it's still like a seventy-eight, seventy-nine. Almost, it's almost four to one. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. And he's already looking fine right now. I mean, he has all the components to maintain control in this later yeah. stages. I mean, he has the huge momentum killer, which is going to be the Molten Giant into a anti kill bot. He just needs a taunter for that to help out incredibly, but yeah. still, I mean, he has the Asher Drake up. Uh, he can even go for this 4-7 trade into the 5-5 five five Mortal Coil. It's not the greatest 
Yeah, I think you might. If you're gonna do that, you might as well just play second sludge belcher. Second sludge now, belcher. Oh two, yeah. yeah two would actually blow up this pretty nicely. I mean, on turn five, the standard play would have just been to play low Deb, but he actually played explosive trap and eagle horn bow, and Raynet actually just thinks this is a freezing trap because he's not even trade trying to trade at it's all true. with this twilight drake. I mean, the worst thing that you want to have happen is you you lose the twilight drake and you lose its presence. Yeah. Keep it on the board if you can get another like. Again, if you can get your, uh, you tap yourself down to getting your Molten Giant, and you double taunt up, Drew, uh, not Druid, <laughs> Hunter will never, ever, ever be able to get through that efficiently. Yeah. Like, it's so difficult. And, of course, you have other cards to beef it up. You have uh, ways to just clear the board. It's just so cost efficient. And uh, not to mention, he's going to test it with this 1-2 that comes out of here. Yeah. The slime. That's, uh, that's definitely a problem. It's a very Definitely strong play. turn seven play. I would say so. Beautiful Shadow Flame, though. Yeah, I don't know if it's too relevant right now. This is the perfect time to, to check for the trap, though, with the slime, and he's yeah. actually going to do that. I think the what the Shadow Flame does is just gives him a lot of security going into the later stages. <laughs> right, that's big. I don't know if he wasn't paying attention earlier that two would actually runs explosive trap. Even two would smile. Renette's like, what? <laughs> it's explosive? <laughs> What is going on? He's very confused. All right. This is... Well, he could so... BGH and then Shadow Flame the BGH. Yeah. That seems completely reasonable to me. <laughs> He's not happy, though. Yeah, I, I, I don't think this was the optimal play, given the fact that it's Explosive Trap. Mm -hmm. um, he threw that one damage basically into nothing. Uh, but, I mean, this is still... Um, a, a very reasonable play. He clears oh, the yeah. board. The hunter's out of steam. And oh both Boobots hit for one. God, that there's such a high. I mean, average is 2.5 per each Boombot. So the fact that it had exactly five health, it double shot the Azure Drake, yeah. and it only did two damage. That's brutal. Sometimes I forget that Boom got Boombot. I quit. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that Boombots can do more than one damage. I got it out. <laughs> there you go, bro. Got it out. Yeah, man. I mean, super, super low rolling. Yeah. Um, can't get quick shot by here, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, but does he just go hero? Uh, uh, no, he has to web spinner. Yeah, I mean, he needs some sort of momentum to kick in. I really wanted, would have wanted him to use... Uh, Quick shot there, because his Misha—he he doesn't protect his Misha at all here. Yeah, you know, the Misha represents four damage repeating over and over, where Quick Shot represents three damage once mm -hmm. and a potential card draw. Um, so it's a little bit rough. Uh, he is going to get the card draw oh. out of it, but he's assuming that whatever he gets from the Quick Shot is going to be stronger. Than Just Misha. gorgeous right now. Yeah, and now he got a Savannah High Man from a Web Spinner. That means he's got three Savannah High Mates in this deck. <laughs> it's value, man. It definitely is value, but like... That's crazy! <sighs> and he's got a Freezy Trap on top of it, so the Sylvanas will be useless. And he knows that usually these handlocks only run one Shadow Flame. So he can't even use this uh, Sylvanas to steal. And Raynette's like, well, <laughs> the last one was Explosive <laughs> Trap. This one might even be Snipe! <laughs> I don't even know what to think anymore. <laughs> My Hearthstone world has been broken. <laughs> um, do we just go Mountain Giant, Sunfear Protector here? I think, like, and just pass turn? Yeah, I like that. Uh, because that way you're not g giving him an extra charge. Yeah. The Eagle Horn Bow, you're still forcing him to trade in. He can't have two Owls. And you slow down the progression, or your the digression of your life, I should say. Yeah. Because you don't want it to obviously chunk out with a six drop here. Yeah, uh, six, not a six drop, a six attack minion. So I think that's the. Oh, is he gonna put him on? Have, having a second explosive trap? No. No. You no. wouldn't dare. Oh. Uh, yeah, no. This this isn't. Um, this is a, a fine play. Okay. As well. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, I kind of. I'm not sure if I agree with not putting out the mountain giant when it costs as. Probably as little as it's going to cost the rest of the game. Yeah. I mean, he. it's so unlikely that he ever is able to push that out. Yeah. And he will get a quick shot out of this as well. 
Yep. I'm not sure though. It, it, it's looking pretty grim at this point. It is. Reyna's at 26 health. Knife juggler, not really going to do him much here. But no, no point in not throwing it, throwing it out. Might as well. Hero power. <laughs> Attack into the owl. And uh, it feels... <laughs> Feel sad being because even if he trades here with them, um, I mean, you do not want to lose either of the cards the knife juggler or the web spinner. Yeah, see, this is where that mountain giant sunfury protector play last turn would have been so much stronger. Oh, yeah, because now he's left in basically the same situation as he was last turn. The high main is just silenced, it could but he's be got though, more power on the board. He's thinking, I, I know it's crazy, but he's like, okay, there is a very low percentage that he might have a BGH, and it's the one way to turn it around. Yeah. So he's like, okay, let's just play super safe. Mm -hmm. I want to see something like that, but also it's like, okay, you can unleash the hounds too. Yeah. Which isn't too uh, efficient. I was going to say, let's say he taps here and uh -huh. doesn't get anything that he can use. He's taking 12 damage next turn. Oh, this rag is going to have to be pretty brutal. Ah! That's okay. okay. Better okay. than Web Spinner, better than Face, I would I would say. Yep. Powder Shredder off the top is actually a, a really big draw, oh, in my opinion. Oh, for certain. For certain. It's sticky. It's, uh, yeah, it's vulnerable to Hellfire, but it's also slightly resilient to Hellfire in a weird way, just yep. because it's the only thing that's actually going to give him something out of it. Um, Do at you this trade the whip center? At this point, I uh, no because it's a rag target. Oh yeah. If it was course. anything other than rag, yes. That's true. Um, but uh, if rag hits web spinner, you're happy. There's your hellfire. But does he want to use it? I mean, he can do this molten giant. That's completely reasonable too. Put me stone. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh my god. And also, he got the timber wolf, which. I mean, it's not super huge, but <laughs> if you're explaining me a way for things to go awry, it could go awry right here. Let's All right. See. Well, so, if this rack hits face, Raynad has lethal next turn. Yeah. If it hits a 1-1, Raynad is sad. And he still might uh, have lethal next turn. Okay. Actually, no, either way, it doesn't matter because whatever he can, it, unless there's going to be two creatures put on the board next turn. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're Ooh. Right. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Oh my god. That's lethal! That's it! Oh, my oh no! God. He top no decked freaking it! Way. Top decked okay. and. Check mark? Wrecked. <laughs> oh. Yikes. It hurt so bad, man. Yikes. And Too Wet knows that he's like, um, well, this is awkward. <laughs> but Raynad is given his very first loss of the day. His overall record for day one of week four of the Legendary Series is now five and one. Still has two more chances to win with that Warlock, though. Still fine. I mean, man, talk about a game where it was in your grasp. Yeah. I mean, did he misplay that at the end somewhere? Um, we were I, talking I, about the Mountain I think that Giant, one but turn, Yeah, I think the one turn with the Mountain Giant would have been better. Um, mm -hmm. The one thing, he wouldn't have been able to silence the uh, Savannah High Main, which could have been... He valued that. And gaining eight health over putting up a really big wall, and not only that, sure. but more power on the board. Sure. Um, because two eight got through that wall pretty easily. Yeah. I mean, all it took was a quick shot. And it was and a two one and a three three. Right? A two one and a three one, a three three taunted up instead of a, a five five and an, an eight, eight eight. Yeah. So big difference. Yeah, really big difference. Um, but of course, two eight still has a druid in mage left to still find wins with. Raynad once again needs one with that warlock in order to get that automatic seed. That's right. Man, so crazy. So unfortunate. It hurts. It hurts my warlock soul, bro. Well, he hadn't, he, at that point, he hadn't drawn in any of his kill commands. No. Um, he was through more than half of his deck. Um, I mean, yeah, he did have a lot of chances. But there was a, uh, if he didn't draw a creature or lethal, it was likely that he was dead the next turn. Yes. Uh, because he was at uh, 20 health with a rag and 13 power on board. So he, he could make it so, ah, it sounds rag, maybe with the second yeah. owl. There was a couple outs for him, or just a 50-50 with rag hitting face. I'm sure, well, he died to spell power, or spell damage. So he needed, like, a heal or Draxis or something like that yeah. as well. I mean, he only has, like, at max two of those, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, he already used one of his antique heal bots. But uh, you got to give it to Tuet, though. He played that about as best as he could have. Yes, uh, I, I, he had exact lethal. 
He top decked exact lethal. I would have settings conceded very, very quicker. Yeah. Much quicker than him. Yeah, there was a couple plays where we were like, oh, what, what is he really doing? But it all made sense in the end. That's right. And uh, very well played game. The bluff with the explosive trap was just <laughs> spot on. <laughs> because he played that like it was freezing trap. You think about it, it's like, there's, that makes no sense. For him to play explosive trap in an eagle horn bow when there's a twilight drake on the board. Yep. And he can loathe them. You're like, well, it's got to be freezing trap. Why would he play <laughs> anything else besides freezing trap? And then uh, Rain Ed, the gave, eyebrows gave it away. The eyebrows gave it away, man. All right, we start this next uh, this next game off with uh, Druid versus uh, Warlock. Of course, Druid versus Warlock, we've been talking about this all day, that it's very frustrating to deal with if you are the Warlock, but you can get some really good situation. Now, he is starting... Whoa, 2 it has Ancient of Wars 2! Wow, interesting. Uh, but he's starting with Mountain Giant, which is obviously very nice. Yeah. And there's no BGH. Okay, so this was one of the long ago mm -hmm. in a land, actually not really that far away. Um, Druid was once upon a time considered very weak against Anlock. This was pre-combo. Well, not pre-combo days, but pre-double combo days. Interesting. Um, because they just didn't have a way to deal with big threats. Um, Handlock will put out a big threat turn after turn after turn, and Druids just weren't, weren't able to deal with it. They can never catch up. But now that they're running double combo, the threat of combo is just always lingering. Yeah. And it turns up so often now. Yeah. Because be before it was just you only had one combo. It's one of each. So I can go down to 14 health and not have to worry. Like, okay, yes, you could have it, but the chances that you draw into it are so low because... There yeah. are two cards that are in two random places in the deck, and most likely you're mulliganing them in the very early stages, so there's a much, much higher chance mm -hmm. for it not to be drawn. Yeah. All right. I'd say, like, 80% of my Druid games are closed out with combo, mm -hmm. and 90-something percent of my Druid games are closed out with at least one piece of the combo. Sure. It's very rare that I win a game where I don't use either Force of Nature or Savage Roar. It's just rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just like such an important component of the the matchup. Yeah. All right. Well, right now he's just uh, the the purpose for Druid. I think at this point is just to get as many many things on the board as possible, always to threaten that combo. Yeah. Uh, or at least just threaten the Savage Roar. But uh, to get rid of stuff. This oh, is wow. very weak to Shadow Flame. Yes. <laughs> he does have a Shadow Flame. Whoa! Would you look at that? Now the one Greedy. Does he want to wait one more turn for the Watcher Shadow Flame? Okay, let's count it. So but uh, no, no, no. I think he has to do it now because Shade, Shade is going to be a five-five. He's not going to be able to clear right. everything off five, the board. Five, nine, eleven, plus another eight. I think he got a Savage Roar here. Yep. Or right, Shadow Flame. Uh, the Savage Roar is it brings him down to three. Yeah. And then with three more, uh, three more mana, he has to do three damage. It's not possible, but. Yeah, well, he can actually use Dark Bomb here and then attack into, the, like, the, the Druid of the Claw. Dark um, Bomb. Yep. Yeah. That's fine. Does. Okay. Sludge Belcher's okay. It's definitely not the worst. Uh, yeah. He probably goes through the the Silence here. And, is that correct? What's more correct here? Is it the Silence or the Druid? Uh, since he has Double Keeper... I would lean. I would lean more towards the silence. silence. Uh, but the thing Raynan has to worry about now is uh, he didn't deal with the shade while he could. Uh huh. Well, he still could. Well, he could, but now it's a lot more awkward because now the shade is getting a lot more value when, uh, like that shade just basically killed a. Um, sorry, killed a sludge belcher mm -hmm. in a situation where it otherwise wouldn't wouldn't have killed anything. Okay. I see. But uh, we're still going to come up with a situation where, especially if he charges his Druid of the Claw, where now we get Watcher Shadow Flame, which yep. is the, the play that I was saying that Raynette could have stalled for in the first place. So it's very risky to go for charge here, uh, and he no. doesn't. So he's going to Shadow Flame his own, his, uh, his big guy, his mountain giant. <laughs> I think so. I would say so, but he actually doesn't have to again. Um, he, can use, he can clear it off and use Dark Bomb. And okay. play a, another mountain giant because he knows that his, oh, opponent, true. his opponent Very hasn't 
Because it, it would only leave a, a shadow boxer on the board, which uh, how threatening is that? Sure. And he knows that my opponent doesn't have BGH because he hasn't he hasn't dealt with this mountain giant. So I might as well use this while he doesn't have BGH, while I can still get the damage in. So uh, I think this play makes a lot more sense. Oh! oh. <laughs> Two words like, hmm, I wonder if oh this God, big man. game hunter is good. It hurts. It's Whoa! Actually, well, okay, so big game hunter is a great top deck, but... There's going to be a lot more eight, uh, seven plus damage creatures that he's going to have to deal with during this game. Okay. Okay. So dealing with the first one with BGH and playing right into Hellfire maybe not be the best choice at this stage. So I don't blame him too much for not going with the immediate BGH. Okay. And that's something you can't really um, get in the habit of is saying, oh yeah, BGH off the top, there's a giant. Boom, got him. Because what is he going to do after he uses the three mana to BGH? Keeper face, just hero yeah, power. That's really awkward. It's You're a right. very weak turn. You're right. You're right. TJ, you teach me so much, man. I'm so wise. Not really. <laughs> uh, Amaz in this. <laughs> Amaz. Wow. Rain out in this spot. It's a little bit awkward. I mean, I've said it time and time again, but. I think his play is very unclear. I mean, he could go for the Ancient Watcher, Defender of Argus, double taunt. He's actually going for the... Wow. Mm -hmm. He's just throwing out the Twilight Drake. Yep. Okay, that makes sense, too. Yeah. Just putting out. threat after threat. Yep. Um, the, the one thing that you need to make sure you do as a handlock is tap as much as you can while it's safe. Because later in the makes game, sense. you're going to be having to use all your cards just to stop yourself from being... So you don't want to use any cards that are going to stop yourself from being comboed um, uh, that early. And you want to make sure you tap as much as you can, so that way you're just opening up your options. Raynet has a lot of ways to deal with for some pretty sticky situations right now. The one thing he does want, though, is an anti heal bot. He needs that pretty quickly. Very much so. Uh, and especially, I mean, look at this hand of Tuet. It's just, like, so, so scary. He has a lot of the components to just do super combos. Uh, he well, just doesn't have the cards. Yeah, this this hand is actually really awkward. Double innervate right now is super clunky. Doesn't really do him much. Having the wild growth, um, like the the last three cards that he's drawn, double innervate wild growth, are not useless, but really weird and awkward. He's gonna have to innervate out innervate second keeper, keeper here just to be able to clear this off, and it's really not that strong of a turn. Interesting. Yeah. Oh so, my god, two two fours on the board? What am I gonna do? So it's very interesting. I, I really, really enjoy this big game hunter uh keeping the big game hunter in his hand. Yeah. Um it's uh, for momentum at the later stages. Which so is when you can need it the clear. most. Yeah, he can yeah. have clear for, for that. Uh if you're Raynad, do you realize that there's no BGH being played and go with the safer like ancient of uh, ancient protectors type of taunt up. Well, we're at the point now, especially with that weird, awkward, suboptimal mm. turn that Tua just did, where Raynette's thinking he's got a lot of dead cards in his hand, which means he's probably got combo in his hand, which means oh, yeah. now we're all of a sudden, he's, my opponent's at nine mana. I need to play around combo every single turn. So it uh, looks like he is going to have to uh, taunt up this. Ancient Watcher, which seems like a very underwhelming turn. Yeah, very brutal. All right, he does pick up Wrath here. Again, like, the last four turns, he's gotten, as you said, like, pretty dud cards. I guess he can throw out Ancient of War at this point. Uh, yeah, well, he doesn't really have anything else to yeah. do. Uh, the, the question is whether or not he uses the Wrath here, um, saves the Wrath to maybe cycle next turn, or uses the Wrath on the Defender of Argus. And, I mean, to be honest, it seems pretty inconsequential at this point. I I, I think he needs to cycle, because his, his hand is bad. But it, it really is. I mean, he's got BGH, and then he's got Wild Growth next turn to cycle, but if he uses his Wrath as three damage, he's basically top-decking the next couple turns to be able to win. If Raynet has a way to deal with his Ancient of War, he's got, like, nothing. 
That's true. Uh, so because he already gave up one of his ancient of lores. Oh, not gave up, but he already used one of them. So yeah. it's not like he has a lot of card draws left yeah. in his deck. So wow, he does go for the three damage onto the defender of Argus. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not sure what that's protecting. Exactly. Like, what what is the purpose of that? I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. And that's just me, like having it very unclear at the moment. Uh, yeah. There are there are ways to deal with this board at this point. You do have a silence. It's not the greatest, but you have like silence, shadow flame, that kind of thing, to clear things out. Yeah, I mean, silence it's, the ancient of uh, ancient of war, shadow flame your ancient watcher seems really powerful, but you do nothing. You yeah, exactly. Like, um, what's your follow up directly after that? You lose your taunt in front. Now, the thing is, you can fit in a tap there, because the board would be clear, um, and you'd be at 16 health. So in that situation, you might as well just tap. Yep. All right. Uh, and it and looks like he's, Yeah. The Belcher is interesting, man, because, like, you want your Ancient of War to get... Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, you want your Ancient of War to get value, uh, and the... I would say the... Um, or, I'm, no, sorry. You want your Ancient Protector to get value. And oh man! When you throw out this uh, Belcher, wait. Obviously, there's weird stuff that can happen. Okay. Is, it, is this lethal? I don't think so. I don't think he can spread the damage no, because out because the the Belcher actually messes things up, right? Yeah. Um, because he has to clear both iterations. So if he force of nature savage roars, um, he could throw the um, ancient of. Okay, he has three fours. Oh my god! Oh no, five fours. Him, his hero has two. He can't do it. Ancient has seven. Can't do it. Yeah. It's just too many even numbers with odd numbered. Yeah. Too many numbers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Let me think. Let me think. He could go for hero power for three damage. If only Keeper of the Grove had three attack. The... Dream, bro. That would be the dream. Yeah, he even has Innervate, but Innervating out of Hero Power doesn't do him anything. Because it okay. still makes it... Uh, oh, he man, should have done this His damage sources is not spread spread around enough. Ah, he can put the Shade, shade out there. Shade good, man. Shade well, definitely helps out. Yeah. You're just playing into Shadow Flame. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Shadow Flame. So good right now. Yeah. And that... Wow. Wait. There's still a chance. This? How can we do this? Because he can actually find a turn where he can BGH, Innervate combo. BGH, Innervate. It's um, possible. Okay. So if Raynad feels comfortable hiding behind a wall of, of, a, of one single giant, it's possible that two hits going to win. But, I mean, right now his hand is just too situational. Raynad can Shadow Flame here. Uh, the thing is, he wouldn't be able to Shadow Flame and Taunt up. No. He could Shadow Flame and then just play Molten Giant. And well, be he can Molten health. Giant Shadow Flame the Molten. Yeah. And he does tap. I mean, 14 is like the number you want to stay away from. Or he can just play his, his uh, Ancient Watcher Ancient from Watcher, hand. Ancient Watcher, Taunt. Yeah. Uh, and and, and Shadow Flame. Well, Shadow Flame the not Taunt one. Um... But Shadow Flame, I think, is a must here. Yes, I agree. It's just how it's just how he does it. Because if he plays Ancient Watcher from hand and Shadow Flame's that, what else does he play? It doesn't seem like he can really play anything. Uh, he can play a second Sunfree Protector, but I'm not sure he wants to give that up. Or he can play one of his Sunfree Protectors, but I'm not sure he wants to give that up. Yeah, I mean, he has two of them. Yeah. Hey, he's still sitting in a good spot, though, because he's got multiple yeah. ways... To play around the combo. And just ends turn. So he's not going to use the Sun Fear Protector. I mean, he has so many like important cards that he wants to use for it right now. Yeah. All right, Wild Growth will pop out here. He needs to draw into something really important, but I don't even know what's going to be Ancient of Lore here. would be fantastic, just so he oh, can draw yeah, into more true. threats. Zombie oh. Chow! <laughs> what? And if he passes the turn here? Oh, no. Uh, oh, Zombie Chow, why? No! Oh my gosh. Oh no. So this is very clear. Molten Giant. You uh, throw the Al Iron Beak Owl into it. You Mortal Coil for another drop. Or for another draw. And there's. Uh, you can even tap. Raynat seems confused. Uh, but I mean, he's. That is a dead giveaway that that hand is combo. Yes. He, he wild oh, yeah, grows. Yeah. 
and then throws out the first card that he gets. He has five mana, or six mana really left over, and the best thing that he can do with six mana is a zombie chow. And he knows that it's not double combo. Because double combo would have killed him last turn. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. he knows that yes. it's not what he beat Domus well, with in the round before. Be, but he just doesn't have the Innervate or something like that. Yeah, he's missing yeah, one yeah, piece. Yeah. Which uh, he is missing one piece. piece, it's just he's missing the Savage Orb piece. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, that was, that last turn was a draw to win. He he would have had to draw it before the Wild Growth, though. Um, you know, he could even. Okay, he's going to throw that out. Yeah. He's going to throw the. Yep, Mortal Coil. Yeah, back up to 17. Oh, oh and an anti kill my God. Oh, no. The dream. He's not even going to play it. All right. Uh, he, I mean, he's still feeling comfortable behind that wall. But, again, the double combo, is it enough at this point? 22 no. minus 6. It's one off of lethal Yeah. if he gets it. One off of lethal. Wow. Yep. Brutal. Um, he would have 12 plus 4 from the face. Yeah, 16. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's brutal. Oh. Uh, okay. Ancient of War. Ancient of Lore. Or Lore. Um, but I, I don't know, even know if he can... So he needs the other Innervate. Wait, he already used an Innervate. Nope. Uh, oh, I, I, yeah, he already used an Innervate. Because, think, if he had his second Innervate, he could have hero-powered with that Innervate. And then he would be able to have lethal. Yep. But he already used it before. Yep. So he's just trying to find... Okay. There's his combo. Well... So you're there's saying there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Second <laughs> Shadow Flame. Okay, that, that uh, no, that doesn't lock it out yet. No, um, no there's still mistakes that that, that could happen. Uh, I mean, he has anti keelbot so I mean, even just Shadow Flame anti keelbot here is enough. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, can Raynad kill Too Wet before he fatigues out? That's true, too. Let's see if we can get a card count on these guys. I think Raynad's still pretty if comfortable, our, though. If our spectator's on point. Just to get seven, a, okay, seven car cards. Oh, that's plenty of cards. Nine cards. Nine. Okay. Plenty. Yeah, he's, he hasn't... They both actually cycled an even amount, which is pretty crazy considering this is Handlock versus Druid, but you see two wets actually... I mean, he cycled one of his Wraths. He's been through both Ancient of Lores. He cycled, had to cycle both of his Wild Growths. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm getting nervous, bro. <laughs> I, I mean, how's he, how's he deal with this for two? He can Emperor Thorsan and then taunt and up taunt the Twilight Drake too. I mean, there's yeah. multiple ways that he just survives the next turn. Even if he, all you do is anti killbot, you you still survive the next turn. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so multiple ways to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he he's still uh, he's still very safe. Super safe, man. And at this point, you're getting to the point it's too wet where you can't hold on to that combo too much longer because you're just going to die. Yeah. Oh, here's it. No. Doesn't do anything, man. Well, if Traxxas comes out, you can <laughs> steal his hands. But. And then you're. Yeah, yeah. You and, can, uh, but then you're immediately going to be. Uh, fatigued. Fatigued, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. But, uh, I mean, how do you get through this? You throw out the uh, Harrison. If you want to hold on to combo, you can throw out Harrison Sludge Bunch at this turn. Maybe clear off the Twilight Drake. He's looking for a swipe, right? He still has swipes in his hands? Yep. So he's Don't know how much swipe is... Oh, uh, yeah, swipe will help. Swipe yeah. will help. Like, he can trade the 4-2 and the 5-5. Five five, uh, swipe the Azure... Azure Drake. Twi toilet Drake? Toilet Drake. Yep. So I, I think he just pops down the Sludge Belcher, the Harrison Jones. Praise. <laughs> Praise. <laughs> Please no Shadow Flame. <laughs> Please no Shadow Flame, that's right. Uh, and Raynad actually runs two Shadow Flames. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about that earlier. I like two Shadow Flames, you to be do? honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty much a choice between two, two... You can run both, double both Shadow Flame and Hellfire, but it's kind of hard to fit that in. I agree. I think Raynad might have cut a Hellfire. I, I haven't seen any Hellfires pop out of him yet, right? Yeah. I think we saw one earlier. Okay. Uh, but I, I, it was only one. He's He only has six cards left, so it can't be that deep in his hand. Sure. All right, so obviously we have to deal with the Belcher. Yep. And then uh, do we silence it? That seems reasonable to me. What are the other cards that we need to silence? Sylvanas. Sylvanas, you're right, you're right, you're right. So we have to keep it. Yeah, I think that's one of the cards that, that's still left remaining for 2-wet here. 
I, I mean, you do have to cut something for uh, Ancient of Wars. And uh, judging by Two White's deck, he actually fits in double combo, both two copies of Fortune Nature, two copies of Savage Roar. Also plays a Zombie Chow. Double Shade, double Piloted Shredder. He might have actually cut Sylvanas. I can't remember actually seeing it, but I'm not sure what other big threats he's cutting to fit in those Ancient of Wars. Because he also runs double of multiple five drops with the Druid of the Claws, um, Azure Drake. So it's really hard to think of what he actually cuts to fit in those Ancient of Wars. I see. Could right. be some honest. Again, double combo. Let me just do the math. Okay. <laughs> just taunt everything. I, I actually think that the math features double combo to win here. But He can't get through eight. No, no, if he didn't taunt up here. Yeah, yeah. If he didn't taunt up here. Yeah, and I mean, this rag's going to gonna hit something. Face. It's face. Yeah, pretty inconsequential, though. He, ha he has anti-kill bot as well. There's, There's that swipe. I too little, too late, though. Yeah. He's going to have to swipe Savage Roar? Uh, uh, swipe Force of Nature? Sorry. Just to stay alive? Uh, he can just swipe in Hero Power. Uh, if he swipes the Rag, uh, Hero Power's down the Emperor okay. and throws the Harrison Jones in. He leaves four power on board. Um, and he'll be at 15 health. Because he hasn't used a Force of Nature, a uh, second Force of Nature yet, right? Yeah, he hasn't used one. That's a su I I'm pretty sure he runs he two runs copies. Two. Um, but yeah. I mean, yeah, I have it just assumed that he's running two here. It definitely is the case that yeah. he might not, but. But yeah, swipe, actually, uh, swipe force nature would clear pretty much everything. Yep. But, I mean, so does just swipe. Uh, but using this force nature here basically tells us that he does have a second one. Oh, he's going for the savage roar. Yeah. He's going to clear off as much as he can. Yeah. Oh, this hurts. I like, know. I'm giving up my only way of survival. Yeah. He's so happy to see that. Uh, right now, that is. And yeah. There you go. Dark Bomb. He has anti -keel bot. Like, there's... So he's just gonna stay alive. Throw out, like, a Sylvanas. He'll be good to go. <laughs> he feels good, man. He can even tap. He can even tap. That's right. Oh, man. I don't think tapping is... Uh, it's not the worst. Uh, I mean, what what does he have left in his yeah. deck? He does have a Molten... I believe he still has one Molten Giant He has Molten one Molten Giant. Molten giant. Left. I'm sure he has, like, a Draxxus. But he's got multiple ways to set up Lethal next turn. The one thing he just wants to make sure is that he just doesn't die. But, yeah, yep. he, he can tap pretty easily. Boom, too. Yeah. That's right. And uh, he can... No, actually... Yeah. Mm. He doesn't even have to heal up. 15 health will be safe, even with... Force of Nature, Savage, or Innervate, because you'd have to put the two damage from face into the um, into the H-Wash. So 15's a good amount of health. All right. He knows he can live. 15's the sweet spot. Tis it is. Tis it is. Mm -hmm. There is a Savannah, so he does okay. run away. But too little, too late. Yeah. A lot of damage being threatened right now. Although it's not lethal next turn. And Warlock does lack a lot of uh, capabilities of being able to just put out burst. immediate damage. He's been through pretty much all of his burst spells. Yep. I mean, we haven't seen Hellfires. He could be holding two Hellfires in his hand. Uh, but it's just super rough. And he's just going to play out his entire capabilities at this point. Yeah. I mean, I mean he just has to throw his own Sylvanas just to try and take some flack here. So, Raynad would... Raynad would steal first, which would be nothing if he traded in. And Two Wet would steal second, which would be something. Um, There's a swipe. Yep. And then he'll integrate hero power into the 5 1. Uh, no? Yeah. I don't think so. Well, yeah, it, it's possible. But, I mean, that means he's saying, well, your Savas is going to trade. Just one for one like that. This way, if Sylvanas trades, then he actually gets the five one. Yeah, since his Sylvanas was played second. Okay. Um, but he put him at fourteen health. He's saying, well, if you don't have a taunt, he's saying, oh, you've been through all these taunts. Yeah, yeah. So this way, okay. uh, I don't think there's any point to attack into the ancient of ancient of uh, or ancient watcher here. I mean, oh man, antique. 
just molten giant antique yule bot. Yep. I think silence the uh, Sylvanas and trade into it. Seems completely reasonable to me. Uh, how is he ever going to win from that point? Um, I don't think he ever does. I yeah. mean, w what you could even do in that situation is, uh, let's see, one or four, seven. Yeah, you could even shadow flame. You could, you could. Five damage into face with the Sylvanas, silences his Sylvanas, oh, and then yeah, Shadow yeah. Flame your own just to get five extra damage on face for to sure. set up for lethal the next turn. Which, uh, at this point, uh, you pretty much guarantee to win anyway. The world is his oyster. Yeah. So. There's literally, like, well, I shouldn't say literally. There are bad plays here. <laughs> but uh, there's no foreseeable bad Shadow plays. Flame, <laughs> Shadow Flame, my ace of four. Play Dr. Boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got it. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. He's running out of time here. He's got to make the decision. Um. Mm -hmm. I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, anyway, as long oh, as he plays okay, the yeah. heal bot, it, yeah, doesn't, it doesn't, matter doesn't matter what he does. Because either way, whether he Shadow Flame the Sylvanas there or Shadow Flame the Ancient Watcher, he sets up for lethal the next turn. Um, and that's a concede. And Raynad. Moves on to the semifinals. He is the victor of Group B. Yes, sir. And even the game that he lost, he, you know, we kind of looked at, and he was very, very far ahead. Yeah. Um, obviously got top decked in that spot. Looked really, really strong. Man, like, I've been, uh, with all the, like, you know, salt stuff that he always gets, mm -hmm. uh, I've always really respected his play, really liked it. Obviously, I learned a ton from him throughout like yeah. his career that's been happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope he continues to do well and continues to be a player. I know he said he wanted to step away from that a little bit more um, and be a coach. But, yeah. like, I, I hope he still produces his content and puts out stuff that, you know, we can consume. Yeah. Uh, well, we said goodbye to a couple players today, but uh, we just want to give you one last reminder of our Redemption Tournament. Every player that's participated in the Legendary Series so far that did not make it so all the runner-ups basically the seven players every week that did not win uh will have one more chance next week may 14th through 17th we'll be having that redemption tournament we'll split those 28 players into four separate seven player brackets the winner of each of those brackets will join us for that land final between june 5th and 7th where they'll compete for a twenty-five thousand dollar prize pool of course that prize pool wouldn't be possible without our sponsors Gigabyte is absolutely awesome, along with Planetronics. They uh, they produce some of the greatest commercials I've ever seen before Indeed. in my life. And without them, esports would not be possible. So a big shout-out and thanks to them. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, catch us on Twitter. Make sure you tweet at us. I used to hashtag HLS, or make sure you follow us on Twitter at ESL Hearthstone. Of course, since we're wrapping up, we'll go ahead and check those tweets after. We'll keep the conversation going ourselves and see what you guys had to, had to say about the broadcast today about the games today. Maybe tweet us about what you think about Raynette's victory. That's right. Hey, I've had a lot of fun, man. I really appreciate yeah. you and Frodan helping me out, carrying me through everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just uh, I'm a guy that's just trying to learn more about Hearthstone. I'm forever a scholar. <laughs> just for good old Greek, Greek tour. I, I just want to learn more and more and more about this game, more about all the games, really. And yeah. uh, I'm just really excited to be a part of this this team. Yeah, it's it's really exciting. Of course, you can see on your screen there the bracket going into tomorrow. Of course, those elimination matches at the beginning of the day. Modern Leper will take on Luigi's, and Domdis will take on Tuet. The losers are out, and the winners move on to face our semifinalists, which are Amaz and Reyna, the two invited players for the week are the two players that make it out uh, at the top of their group. A lot of money on the line, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, for this particular series, yeah. it's you know, $3,100 on the line. So it's not nothing. It's definitely a lot. All yeah. these guys are already awarded $200, mm -hmm. and the winner takes the rest. Yeah. Uh, so that is going to do it for us here at ESL. Do you have any final statements before, before we head off here? Just uh, happy to be coming back tomorrow. All right, coming back tomorrow for Mother's Day. So we will return uh, tomorrow with the finale of week four of the Legendary Series. I believe we'll be starting at the same time. That's 1 p.m. Uh, PST. You can also head over to legendaryseries.com for more information. But for myself, from Greetorp, from Frodan, and from the rest of us here at ESL, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.